India, a country in which leading car makers predict annual sales will triple in the next decade. Mumbai is overcrowded. It's, it's just completely, absolutely stuffed with human beings. And every human being wants more and more and more. It's like a heroin addiction. We want more, you got one car, you want second car, you want a third car. I want, I want, I want, I want. The majority of people in Mumbai can't afford cars. India is a country responsible for just 4.7% of the world's emissions. But that is changing. Motor companies are competing to produce the cheapest cars this market has ever seen, putting the automobile within the price range of millions. The race is on to dominate this emerging market and inundate Mumbai streets. Cars are increasing in number, small cars and more affordable. It is going to be a a uh, huge uh, problem, it is going to be a big challenge for us how to deal with the public, uh, uh, how to deal with the uh, traffic jam problem and it will be a big headache for us. So, traffic is very big, so much traffic is very big. It seems like sometimes we will go down the car and we will go down the car. It seems like traffic is very big. Maduka is a limo driver who works for one of the city's most popular car companies. i <laughs> <laughs> Faster and faster, this country is churning out cars. A year ago, this factory wasn't here. Today, 200 cars roll off its lines every day, and demand is rising. It's always busy. We are operating one shift at this moment, and we are producing 200 cars a day, and uh, our production requirement is increasing day by day. So we are working nowadays even over time to meet the market requirements. At this time it is noisy because we are making a new model car in this line. Everybody's objective is to own a four-wheeler. I mean that's a status symbol also as a pride if you own a car. It's a transport revolution for Mumbai, but an environmental nightmare for the planet. Cars are hideously on the increase in Mumbai. Every single car manufacturer is salivating at the thought of selling some upcoming young person yet another car. There's no place to park those cars. There's no place to drive those cars. But the car manufacturers are having a ball right now. We can't stop the people buying cars because that is their liberty, no? They can use whatever they want to buy. If we have given the permission to manufacture this type of cars, if we have given the uh, permission to sell this type of 
product. So people, we can't stop. Mumbai is morphing into a metropolis dependent on motor transport. It's an all too familiar tale. What's basically happening in Mumbai is that the solutions that people are coming up with, not just Mumbai, but every large city in the world, they want to go the LA way, build more flyovers, turn them around, go over here, go there, do this, all for private transport. People, uh, in a sense, emulate the Los Angeles lifestyle, emulate the large cars, emulate the sprawling structure of the city with suburbs miles and miles away from the city center, emulate the dependence on the automobile and the ownership of the automobile, not only as status, but as a necessity. That may not be the model to emulate in a 21st century faced with a global warming challenge. I think that emulating America's lifestyle is as suicidal as jumping off the edge of this building. All over the world, roads are unfurling across the Earth's surface as more and more people move to the cities and take to four wheels. More than one billion vehicles are on the roads today. And experts say we're accelerating towards a second billion, with Asia leading the way. If all those cars burn fossil fuel, scientists believe we're hurtling towards climate chaos. The emissions currently in the atmosphere are already changing the climate. Even if emissions are lowered now, we will still face the consequences of climate change. According to the UK Met Office, if we continue to run on oil and gas and coal at the current rate, the global average temperatures are likely to rise by four degrees Celsius by the end of this century, and sea levels by up to 80 centimeters. Here in California, we've already seen things such as seven inches of sea level rise over the last century. Looking out to the next 100 years, we have up to 10 or 15 times that of what's being predicted. It doesn't matter how much money you have, a changing climate is going to hit us all. We will not avoid some climate change in this century. We must adapt. It's a responsibility to our children. We do have to adapt right now because we have not been able to adequately address the mitigation question. Adaptation means, well, we're going to get some climate change no matter what, so we better figure out how we're going to be less hurt by it. Should we retreat? Do we need to move back to different areas? Should we just build up seawalls? So where we are right now at the state for planning is to try and look at what options are available. Options for Los Angeles, the sixth wealthiest city in the world, might be difficult, but at least they have some. For other cities on the front line, there might not be any options at all. If you worry about LA, I worry about the mega cities in the mega deltas of Asia, China and Vietnam and places like that, and Thailand, because there are hundreds of millions of people living within meters of sea level with rising sea level and intensifying typhoons. This is a prescription for a mega disaster. For us, it's only going to cost money. For them, it's going to cost lives. The Los Angeles River. There's nowhere in the city that cars haven't colonized. It was along these concrete banks that Arnold Schwarzenegger battled as the Terminator. Today, there is a different fight against an increasingly hostile world. The presence of water in LA has always been precarious. A changing climate will make it worse. Drought. Since the beginning of, this, of the 20th century, we haven't had enough local water to support the population and the agriculture of Southern California that is simply going to be exacerbated and become worse as things become hotter and drier and population continues to grow. Temperatures in California are on the rise, with urban centers like LA blazing the way. Deep inside the city's trees are clues as to what happened the last time the area heated up. 
That is always the exciting part, to see, to see what you have. And that's the record of precipitation in Southern California at this site, preserved in the rings uh, of this oak tree here. And from that, by measuring the widths of these rings, we'll get a record of what's happened here. The tree rings show that when temperatures rose, the region was parched. I'm afraid the story wasn't pretty. Southern California was continuously in a state of drought, year in and year out. So what are we seeing today? In a sense, it's back to the future. It's like what happened a thousand years ago under natural climate warming. Here's the difference. That was caused by natural factors. We think what we're seeing today is caused by human factors. What's gonna happen in the future? That's really up to us. Mayor Villaraigosa says the city of L.A. reduced its water consumption by a record-setting 17% in July compared to the same month last year. 